O-M-G. I cannot believe this piece. I've had it a while, about a year and a half. Jim from New Mexico sent me an email with a picture of this. He said, you want this? I think Jim's a man of few words. And to be really honest, I think I didn't want it, but if anyone wants to send me wood and, and feels like maybe I can do something with it, then I, I kind of feel like I owe it to them to give it a try. So I said, yeah, Jim, I, I want that. Yes, I do. Just in case this is my last piece ever, I want it to be my last piece ever. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be. I'm not saying that for a second. But if that were the case, I'd, I'd go to my grave being sorry I never gave it a try. So today's the day. Jim doesn't know what this is. I don't know what it is. Maybe you know what it is. He found it on a scrap pile, he said. Right here, this is all burned. So it might have been a burning scrap pile. Over here, it kind of looks like it was burned, but it, I don't think so. I think it's just real dark bark. Maybe it's sooted up. I don't know. I can tell you that I can stand about here and see about four or five rocks in there without, without turning my head. I can just see them in there. Uh, I've tried to get a few of them out. They are really in there, so uh, they, I guess they're going to have to come out while we're turning it. I don't know. I'm going to have to cut the top part off here just so that I have a flat spot. This will be the top of the piece. It's going to be a bowl. It's currently about 11 by 14 inches by about 9 inches tall. If I cut that off, it's going to be about 8 inches, 7 and a half, 8 inches tall. It's just, it's just a real interesting piece that we are going to turn into a bowl of some kind. I don't think it's going to hold soup. Let's get at it. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy! For those that don't know, this is a faceplate ring. Uh, it takes the place of a faceplate, which you would screw on where the chuck is screwed on. But rather than take the chuck off, you can buy a faceplate ring that has a, a dovetail recess right here. And that meshes up with the dovetail jaws on the chuck. So you just put that on there like that. And open your jaws into it. And you've got a good metal to metal hold. And as long as those four screws hold up, we should be in business. But I will, I will use tailstock support as well. A couple of things. I glued, I glued some bark down that was loose on here. Mostly bark that I'm quite likely going to turn away, but I don't always know. So I glued some on. While the glue was drying, I, I did dig uh, some rocks out of there. That one looks like an agate. Anyway... Uh, I can still see a couple more, but I couldn't. I couldn't get them out. Yeah, oh yeah, I see. I see three of them right in there. Can you see them in there? Right down in there. Anyway, and I'm sure there's probably more. The more I look at this piece and what I cut off of it, the more it looks like man's a needle to me. And if that's the case, I'm so sorry. I swore I'd never turn another man's a needle piece. If, you, uh, if you've ever seen my video, I think it's called Cracks, Cracks, and More Cracks. It's a piece of manzanita that just gave me fits. It was awful. It was awful to turn. And it looks a very much like this. This doesn't seem to be as hard as that was. That was so hard. I mean, it was so hard. My, my chisel just skipped over the wood. It wouldn't even hardly cut it. I had to use carbide much of the time. But I did get it done. Anyway, I don't know if I'm up to turning another piece of manzanita today, but we can give it a try. Now, I think this part right here is going to be very important when we don't want to lose it. And if I stick my fingers in here and try and grip it, it's only about an inch and a half, maybe thick. Inch and a quarter, inch and a half. So as I flatten this off, flatten the bottom off, I don't want to cut that away. And the reason is, when I make a bowl out of a piece of wood like this, although not many of them are like this, but 
I need, I, I, I can have a gap here, I can have a gap here, maybe here, you know, but generally, generally you want a bowl shape so that when you look at it, you say, oh, that's a bowl, even though it's missing here and there. But, but if this goes away, then we're missing this and this, and holy cow, that's, you know, that's a quarter of the bowl. We don't want to be missing that much. So I'm hoping that I don't have to cut up into that too far. It does appear that this will go away. But it does appear that this is higher that way towards the top of the bowl than anything else is. So I don't think I'll get into it. But it's something to keep an eye on. I can only turn at 360 RPM because it's out of balance. But as I turn the outside, a lot of this is going to go away. A lot of this burned part will come off. And I set my center up that way on purpose. This sticks out this way further than that does. So I'll be cutting off the heavier part, the black part, the burned part, and that should round the bowl up a little bit. Isn't that interesting? So I've sharpened up my 5 8 inch bowl gouge. I'm going to be turning at 360 RPM, mask and face shield on. It sounds like manzanita. I'm sure we haven't made much progress. I just want to see how little we've made. Little. It's just going to be real slow going. I might even, uh, I'm going to speed this up, but I might even just skip a lot of it because you're going to get real bored. I can't have people falling asleep on me. It's going to be pretty, we can see that, but it's going to be a long time before we get to pretty. I'll show you in a minute here what I've been doing. But I, I switched to carbide because I just kept sharpening my gouge over and over and over. I wasn't getting anywhere. You can see how the carbide just kind of chews it up. This, this has to be manzanita. It's just the hardest wood I've ever turned. It's just a pain. I'm getting it round, as you can see. It's still out of balance. You're not missing much, but I'll show you what it looks like. It's just going to take forever. Hold on, I'll get the lathe spinning. Let me get my mask and face shield back on here and a glove. I was able to pick the speed up to about 700. Let's see. No, no, I don't mean 700. 400. 400, not 700. That would be nice. You see? You see? You're not missing much. So I'll bring you back again this week. Well, I haven't made much more progress, but I got the bottom flattened off almost. I still have a little bit here. But I wanted to uh, mark out for my tenon. So that's my tenon size. You see that little pocket of rocks there? Got that one. That one's kind of pretty. 
I've had quite a bit of stuff flying out of here, but I, I don't think I've had any rocks flying yet. I don't know. They didn't get me anyway. I want to say, boy, is it going to be worth it, boys and girls, but I don't know if it is or not. <laughs> I'm going to have to get me a little, some hand pruners and prune off some of this little stuff. I think it will be worth it. I just don't know what it's going to look like yet. It's Apparently it's not going to be a very deep bowl. You can see how thin this is, this edge. But then over here, it's much thicker in the middle. Of course, we're going to be cutting that middle away. So it looks like it's not going to have very high sides. I don't know. It's going to, I don't know what it's going to be. A shallow fruit bowl or something. So I'll see you all here tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Saturday the, I don't know, 19th or 18th, 19th, something like that of uh, February. See you tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to try and switch back to my 5 8 inch bowl gouge to put that tenon on there. And then I'm going to try using it to turn with at least flatten off the bottom we'll we'll see how it goes going to be at 460 rpm 5 8 inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on Well, that worked pretty good. And I'm going to use this diamond point tool to square up the sides of the tenon. Okay, that should do it. Now we'll go back to the bottom. Okay, I'm going to start working on this corner over here. This is just going to have a wide flat bottom, that's all. There's not a lot I can do about it because of this piece I have to save. Yeah, that's just a silly waste of time. So we'll try this. That's just awful. Just awful. Well, you know, actually we're we're just about there as far as how much I can turn before I run into big gaps and valleys and stuff in here. Not quite sure what to do with this. Let me stop a bit and look this over. I'll be back. Well, I spent quite a little bit of time looking this over. I also spent some time cutting off some of the branches. They were sticking way out here, and every time the, the piece had come around and hit the chisel, they would push away, and then they'd bounce back, and that was causing a whole lot of this kind of motion, and I wasn't getting anywhere. So then I tried my scraper, and I think it's going to do an okay job. And, and I think I've done about as much turning as I can do on this, considering all of the features. <laughs> Shall we call them features? Oddity? I, you know, I've been doing this so long, you'd think I'd have a name for it. I just don't. All of the nature in the piece. Considering how thin this is, the gap that we have here, and the fact that I don't want to lose this, I think I'm done turning, except that I'm going to use my scraper.
Oh, that's kind of peaceful, isn't it? It is not great. I'm not going to try and tell you it's great, but it's, uh, it's a whole lot better than it was. Time for sanding. I've covered the sandal flex in many, many of my videos, and I have a dedicated video on how to fill and feed one of these. You can look that up if you have one and you want to know how to put new sandpaper inside there, because you, you do, you refill these. But I wanted to touch on something else today. I think I may have touched on it one time or another, but it's been a while. The kind that look like this, these are called scored. They've scored the sandpaper into these little little tiny strip and what that's for is to to do these irregular shapes inside here maybe along here inside here maybe right there that sort of thing that's for irregular shapes if you use this to try and sand this smooth all it's going to do is follow the contours and and you're going to have smooth contours you're not going to have a smooth flat surface you want you want this to be more or less flat they have the unscored or plain Sometimes they're called plain, sometimes they're called unscored. It'll, it'll just clean it right up and smooth it out and make it look great. Then I will switch to my 2 inch disc at 80 and I'll sand all the rest of this up through 400 grit. And I'll show you what all that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. I'm going to have the lathe spinning in reverse at about 320. And then I'll do it forward as well. Then I'll switch to this one. And do all those contoured parts. And then with the lathe spinning in reverse, still at about 320. I'll be doing that. And like I said, up through 400. And I'll bring you back here in about two hours, I imagine. We'll put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, change of plans. I'm putting on Danish oil. It sure is bringing out the grain, I can tell you that. It looks good. I don't know how far to go up in here, how much turning I'm going to be doing on the top side. <laughs> it's full of rocks. I've got this pocket of rocks right here, my gosh. Uh, and I've been, I told you this is going to take a couple of hours. There's another rock and, and another rock. I mean, there's just tons of rocks in here. I told you it was going to take two hours. Uh, I think I've been at this for five hours because I forgot. I haven't turned a... I haven't turned a uh, root ball for a while and I forgot about all the dirt that I have to dig out of there with a little screwdriver and air compressor to blow it all out afterwards. And I had to continually trim away little tiny roots. So you can pretty much see what it's going to look like. So I'll see you tomorrow again. Oh, and there's more rocks. Oh, more rocks. Yay. We've got the piece turned around with the tenon mounted up in the chuck, and now it's time to look over what we have here. It's quite a mess, isn't it? You can see the rocks in there. There's about three rocks, three or four rocks right here, and there's more in there. I think that's, yeah, that's a rock right there, too. Now, this is interesting over here. It looks like it doesn't belong there. It looks like some kid 100 years ago or 50 years ago or something took a half inch square piece of wood and shoved it in into a crevice in the tree and there it is. Doesn't look like this wood. It's square. I don't think I've ever seen a square branch. So I, I don't know what that's about. So what I'm looking for now is what happens if? What happens if? What happens if I cut into this part? Where is this connected? So I follow it down and it's connected to this thin piece down here. Don't think it's connected here. It might be, but it looks like there's bark all in there. I think it's touching this, but I'm not so sure it's connected. I don't, I don't think so. I think it's more like a bark inclusion in the middle. 
I could cut into it, but not much. You know, I could kind of, I could kind of buzz by this part right here as long as the main part stays attached. If I want to save it, maybe I don't want to save it. Other than that, it looks like, it looks like we're good to go. So that means keep the bowl maybe inside of this right here. So that's just the, some of the stuff that I consider when I'm turning something like this. I'm just not even going to waste my time with high speed steel. I'm going to get nowhere. So I'm going to use this hollowing tool. This is a Easy Wood Tools number one hollower. It just takes a little tiny cut. It's not going to go dull every minute and a half. And it's going to take a long time because it's such a tiny cutter. But at least we're going to make progress, I think. I think, I hope we are. I don't know what speed we're going to be turning out. Let's see. About 470. Starting to vibrate pretty good at 470. Number one hollower, 470 RPM, mask and face shield on. remember where that rock was uh, it's down here I am in line to hit it but I guess there's nothing I can do about it but hit it so I don't think it'll hurt me it might hurt the tool a little bit Something went flying, I might be hitting those rocks. I don't know, anyway, it didn't get me. That's all I know. What are we gonna do about that stick? You like it? Leave it? Take it out? Looks like we're just gonna miss it if I don't go any wider. This is nerve wracking, I'm gonna take a little break. Well, okay, looks like I need to know. Keep the stick or get rid of it? I guess, I guess keep it, right? It's part of the history. It's absolutely square. There's no way that was a branch. I wonder if I can pick the speed up any. Not really. 480. I'm going to try uh, high speed steel, I'm going to try my bowl gouge, just because this is pretty rough and I don't know, I just think maybe the larger tip will help me get it smoothed out, I don't know. Okay, we'll go thinner at the bottom. And my scraper is going to fix up a lot of that, I hope, I think. Can't come out here much further now. Oh, and where's my stick? Yeah, see?
rock. I thought I was getting a hard time. Oh yeah, took a little chip out of it. I'm never gonna get that out of there. That is buried. No chance. Well, that's not gonna do my scraper much good, is it? Sheesh. I think we're about done, I guess. Well, I'm not going to sharpen this because it's not going to do any good with that rock. But let's see what happens. Let's try and pick up the speed. I don't think so. No, 490. right about there. There we go. Yeah, that's causing me to leave a ridge there. Can't do a thing about it but sand, I guess. Time for sanding. Well, you can see I'm not sanding in my normal manner. I'm not spinning the piece for the sole reason that I don't want to polish up this little stick. I want it to look like it did in, in real life, you know, when it was living. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna be doing each grit, 80 grit up through 400. Just like this, just moving the piece around. I've got a pretty good gouge here where that rock is and I probably can't get it out. I've, I've tried to get it out. Maybe I'll try my sandal flex in there. That's not gonna get it out, but it might clean it up a little bit nicer. I don't know. Anyway, so this is what I'll be doing for a little while, and we'll put some more Danish oil on there. See you in a bit. I have mixed feelings about this piece. <laughs> I, I cannot get rid of my tool marks. This wood is just too hard. It's just... It's just too hard. I, I sanded that with my sandal flex a lot. It's quite smooth, but my tool mark's right there. This is not a tool mark. Definitely not a tool mark. There's no indentation to it. It's a, I don't know what they call it, a, a ray in the wood. The grain just goes that way, that's all. Like I said, I don't know. I, I'm fond of saying, if you have a lathe, there's no such thing as firewood. Well... I think I would make an exception for dry manzanita. I think if you got dry manzanita, set it on fire. Don't try and turn it. Don't, don't, don't do this. This was not any fun. Okay, it was a little bit of fun. It was fun finding the rocks, and it was fun finding the stick sticking up out of there. But I hope you like it. I made it for you. If this would have been for me, I would not have finished it. Life's too short, you know? So I will finish this, wait a half an hour, put another coat on, wipe it all off, let it set overnight, and we'll take care of it tomorrow. I just couldn't get it done today. Not a chance. See you tomorrow. Let's get this done so I can get back in the house where it's warm. It is cold out here today. Got a block of wood mounted up in my chuck. I'm going to place a non-slip piece of material over that and bring up the bowl and bring up my tailstock. I still have that center hole there for reference so I'm just going to drive my live center into that. I'll bring up my tool rest. We'll spin the piece up and see if it's running true. Uh, pretty close. Pretty close. Close enough. Turn the lathe up to about 430. I'm going to use a half-inch bowl gouge and commence to removing that tenon. So 
So that's pretty small, so I'm going to switch to a swept back bowl gouge, still half inch, so that I can get in there a little closer. Boy, this wood is hard, I'm telling you. Just hard. And as I said, I'm thinking this is end grain, so it's quite possible it'll break rather than cut away. So I'm going to turn the speed down to about 200 RPM. So in case it does break, I'll have a little tiny bit more time. And now I'm just going to apply the bevel of the gouge against the bottom of the bowl. Pressure towards the headstock, right hand on the gouge, left hand on the switch. And when the little nub stops turning or breaks, we'll know we're through. Kind of cut away and broke. Now I'll just take this over here to the workbench, sand that up, sign it, and get it finished, and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around at the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. That would help me out so much. Thank you for that. Well, here it is. One manzanita bowl in the books. It's beautiful, I think. I hope you think so. I mean, look at that grain. It's just beautiful. Beautiful color. So much to see here. It's kind of like it's kind of like it's in layers. You've got this layer, the bowl part, and then you've got the outer layer here. It's even more so over this way. <laughs> That's got the outside of the bowl here, inside of the bowl here, outside, inside, and then it's got a whole another layer out here. I think that's so cool. There's no no bad side to this. This up here is where it was burned in a fire. There's, I just left a little bit of it, not much, but I, I wanted some evidence of it. The rest of the black is the uh, is the bark, that root root bark. Now, does this piece have any problems? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And I'm not proud of them. You can see my tool marks in there. That's something I just avoid with every part of my being when I'm turning something. I don't want any tool marks. But there they are. And they're prominent. And I'm going to call them battle scars. This, this was a very, very, very difficult piece to turn. Much like the manzanita piece I turned before. And I'll link to that. I want you to see that one. Cracks, cracks, and more cracks it's called. Because it's full of cracks. Uh, I, I think manzanita must just do that. It's just it's just full of cracks. But that other one is is more cracks than wood. And it's quite beautiful itself. But I, I like this piece, and I think it's useful, usable. But more than anything, it's just an art piece to set on an entryway table to impress your guests. Not because Phil did it, because nature did it. Look at that! Wow, look what nature did for us. It's just beautiful. Thank you, Jim, from New Mexico, for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.